All right, ready to rock here on the second turn of the second crusade. And we had the placement, well, first the recovery of units, and that's controlled by uh, the scenario chart. And you can see some countries, like the Byzantium gets a replacement rate of two, but they have no troops on the board, so they can't get anything. Um, some of the other territories, though, can, things like Edessa, uh, have a replacement rate of one half. Even number turns, they get something. The Hospitallers have, uh, whatever they are, one out of every three. Jerusalem gets one a turn. We can see some of the losses from Edessa and uh, Antioch have been recovered. There are half units on the board at this point. Um, also got the mustering which allows you to place units on the board. Eh, somewhat restricted. You can only put, say, three new units in a capital, which means if you had two units sitting there, which you're uh, not allowed to do, actually, normally. There were excess units here because there were Crusader units in Antioch. Um, then you're allowed to put the additional forces there. My reading of this is that you could not keep uh, two extra units there, which is bad for the Fatimids. I'll, I'll look that up again, but it's bad for the Fatimids. They had to spread their force out, and they don't control Jerusalem, so they can't place units in Ascalon. So that's kind of a, a problem for them. They don't have any forts, uh, any castles out here. They're not forts. You can't just build them. Anyway, that gives us our setup. It's going to be tough for the Muslims to bring their forces to bear. Damascus doesn't have much. The card which brings Damascus into play can make them more potent. I should consider, though, that there are some victory points now in play, which I think actually makes the crusade possible. Again, something I have to look up. But I, I was... Uh, mistaken that happened last turn when these diplomatic actions took place um, and well other than that the sieges are in continuation they weren't broken often they will break during uh, the season the interface between turns all right okay one little mistake I fixed uh, in Egypt I could have left uh, the vizier in place with three three units and that obviously is what you want to do you don't want to have to spend your time trying to gather the Egyptian army so by doing that I've got a whole stack there uh, forgot to check about the victory points I'm pretty sure that they actually count though let me see okay the turn starts off with uh, some quick siege action first uh, besiegers supply runs low hurting the Crusader army here with a uh, attrition check, which didn't hurt them, and increasing the defense factor. Then the Christians played a combined attack, or the Crusaders, uh, pushing Raymond down here and moving uh, uh, the larger force over into Aleppo, uh, into the siege of Aleppo. And then the Muslims played an epidemic on them in their newly uh, conglomerated force, and it hurt a little bit. We can see there's a Crusader unit in the box. Another one took a step loss as well. So we're seeing, uh, you know, some of the problems with maintaining a siege. Two assaults have eaten up almost the entire turn. The first one at Aleppo wasn't too serious. Um, I don't think the defender had anything. Uh, it looks to me like the attacker dropped the moat, but maybe I'm looking at more than one event. I think I'm looking at a handful of events took place. Uh, and then an assault that didn't really succeed, but it didn't fail too badly. I think it was a step loss on each side. And then this humongous set of play of cards alternating back and forth. Every time the attacker plays a card, the defender can play uh, a siege card if they have the right card in hand, a D in their hand. Well, some of these generate card draws. So this can go on for quite some time and this essentially ate up the entire hand. The, uh, the Muslims have one card, the Crusaders have two. Uh, brought it down to a resistance factor of two there, but it still was not successful. We're talking about rolls on this table, both took a, a single loss, not enough to capture the city. 
And the turn finishes up with the Crusaders actually uh, conquering Aleppo. They managed to get the resistance factor down to zero and finish it off. Uh, Got to check for whether or not there's a political advantage to that. Ooh, so I gotta find the political advantage chip. I rolled a six, which is the, uh, you failed, you angered the world. So now the diplomatic advantage card chip will go to the uh, Seljuks. Now, they can use that to modify diplomacy results, either players, but they can also, uh, there's also other uses for that little chip. I'm trying to remember. I know you can demand free passage. That's not really an issue here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it seems to be all it can do. So it, it, it's a chip that's going to allow them to prevent diplomatic uh, attempts to neutralize some of these. But neutralizing... Damascus especially is questionable, and that's the easier of the two. Because Damascus, and I was actually considering this, Damascus is actually kind of weak. Um, the Kingdom of Jerusalem could go take Damascus. Right now, because of the victory point swing from Aleppo, the Crusaders have enough points at uh, 27 here. Yeah, that's a mess, that track. But they have 27 points, which is enough for them to win the game if it were to end right now. It's not going to end right now. And because uh, the Muslims have enough points, there's still going to be... It, it's not going to be an automatic victory for the Crusaders on turn four. They have to take more territory now. All right. Uh, I'll go to reducing the forces, come back, at, and show you what the end of the turn looks like. Well, if you don't finish a siege in a time, there's a chance that you demobilize, and that's what happened to Zengi here. His forces are now in the force pool. They'll show up again, but that was a big investment. Two whole turns on Edessa, and he hadn't gotten anything. And meanwhile, he's lost Aleppo, which maybe he could have defended had he left Edessa. He thought he had a good hand. Both sides had good hands. Anyway, here we move forward with the game turning. There's the diplomatic advantage. Shit. We haven't seen that before. All right. One to turn three. Before I want to go forward, I, I do want to note one thing that's of kind of some interest. There's sort of this dual-edged sword with bringing the allies in. By bringing them in, I'm ensuring the crusade's going to happen. The game's not going to end just because the crusaders outlucked me and got Aleppo as as the Muslims. Um, but on the weak side, it does open up. Damascus, for example. I don't think uh, Egypt's a danger in terms of being able to conquer anything of value there from the Crusader point of view. I was considering pushing the Kingdom of Jerusalem out that way. They might be able to win a battle, and if they could, they might be able to take something of some value. But, you know, that's just too risky as far as I'm concerned to push down that way. Uh, taking Ascalon would probably be worth it. Taking something else, a lot less so. All right. Well, the mustering uh, here in turn three makes it clear that the Muslims are severely at a disadvantage. They're on the ropes here. First of all, they weren't even able to muster all their troops uh, because they're only allowed one per castle and then four in uh, the off-map box. So the Seljuks aren't entirely able to replenish even what they could rebuild. I chose to pull a half strength unit out for Hama just because I don't think I'm going to be reaching there easily and I don't want to have to deal with that, but the additional defenses are useful. Um, it is possible that I could slide down and help Damascus somehow, and that, that would be its one kind of reason I might have wanted a full strength unit, but otherwise it's going to be a tough fight here, but Jocelyn doesn't have much. He's, uh, he's been weakened here. And this is sort of the main actual crusading army, and it's got the two new crusaders, and the hospitalers made it back this turn. That's pretty potent, but there aren't a lot of pieces there either. There's no way I'm going to be able to end 
the game, I think, easily uh, on this turn, which means the crusade will be triggered. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to create a piece. Whether or not that's, you know, a big deal is hard to tell because the Crusaders do have a lot of victory points here. And it almost kind of explains why you would attack Damascus. It's not that bad a thing. There's only, there's only a couple of units there, right? If the card doesn't come into play, it might be a way of forestalling a problem that could otherwise grow there. Uh, as it stands, it's hard to tell what I want to do of course, until I see the cards. But the Seljuks don't have a tremendous force. On the other hand, I don't think the uh, Fatimids have enough to really face the way the Kingdom of Jerusalem set up to defend at this point. So this may still be my best front, but if all I have is a handful of one cards, maybe it's time to get the Fatimids moving. They have a long trip though. And okay, if it was a one-time investment, that's fine, but it's longer than one time because you have to, once you push through, you're only going to get, have three units left. So unless I can beat the Kingdom of Jerusalem straight up, beat that army in this first turn, it doesn't make sense to launch the attack. Okay, a quick launch of uh, actions that took place. The first one, heretics cause unrest. The uh, Muslims played this to cause a problem in Edessa. Uh, weakens the resistance factor of the city. The Crusaders played a three-point activation and we're going to activate this army. As soon as that was done, uh, the Muslims played the Grieved Subordinate, which prevents three units from moving. That keeps the Crusaders from being able to move the units into Odessa that could put down that her uh, heretical uprising. And now uh, Zenji gets to move in and, and begin a siege, presumably. We'll see. And indeed, they moved there. They got away with it. Uh, resistance factors four. There was no chance of an automatic surrender for uh, essentially too small a stack for the Muslims and this penalty. So they needed to roll with the leader bonus at least a seven. Plus, I think this guy's in range and may have half the strength this guy's in range. So either one of those, if they're half the size of, uh, in terms of strength points, they would have also provided a penalty, but there was no chance. So now we're on the Crusader turn and they've got to figure out what they're going to do about it. This was a hard choice for the Muslims. They had to decide, were they going to focus on an attack against Edessa or maybe move against Jerusalem? Jerusalem's worth a big five points, so it's very appealing, but that's so far away. It's a hard call. And as long as they had the cards and the forces to make the attempt on Edessa, it seemed like a wise move. Okay, so the Siege of Edessa continued. The Crusaders didn't have any more high-value cards. All they had were twos, so they couldn't move their main Crusader leader to do anything. So they chose uh, to group forces under Poitiers here. He's, I don't know, I think he was my bonus leader that came with something or another. No, he started here and uh, made an attack on Edessa. It wasn't a good attack. His force was wiped out, although he managed to escape. Now, that counts as a major victory for the, uh, for the uh, Muslim power. So, gets to roll, well, it counts as a victory. So he gets to roll on the diplomatic change table. He already had the marker, but he rolled a six and that means it went over to the Christian side, which is one of the things, even if you, you know, have the advantage, you still have to roll no matter what, whenever you win a battle. But it does make it look like Edessa may well fall this time. The resistance factor is only three. It was down to two and there was an attack, but that attack wasn't successful. The Christians played a uh, plus one resistance factor on two of their fortifications. This is all they can do, really. They don't have a lot of forces. They're really considering this, the ability during the mustering phase, and maybe they should have done this last time, reducing some of their garrisons, especially the interior ones that over here, to get some more troops to face, uh, uh, to face up to the, the uh, Seljuks. The Seljuks have taken Edessa at this point. They killed 
uh, Jocelyn down here. I think he can be brought back in because he's fairly low rank. But that costs a couple of replacement points, which would be hard to get. Uh, and we're kind of at the tail end. By the way, that resets this marker. It's also set the victory points so that the Crusaders can no longer win if the game were to end right now, say, which it can't. But they're below the 25 points they need to win, which means then we devolve to, well, do the Muslims win? And the answer right now is yes. I think in this current situation, it's pretty much guaranteed that one side or the other is going to win at the end of the game, just because so many of the Muslim, uh, the two countries have fallen into the Muslim line here. There's enough victory points in play. There might be some possibility, say, neutralizing some of these other powers, which could remove the victory points so that uh, a draw is possible. The Christians, with a couple extra cards in their hand, because of, uh, I don't remember why exactly, um, maybe C defects or whatever, I've been playing over multiple turn or multiple uh, hours here, just on and off, uh, opened up a new siege on Damascus. They abandoned Jerusalem to make it. Basically the idea being, eh, maybe I can get it, maybe I can get lucky. Jerusalem can replenish losses to some extent. And if I can't get lucky, well, next turn I'm going to have that big crusader army that's probably going to be the main force that I'm going to be acting with. The uh, Seljuks played Castles Cowed, which allowed them to take up to three castles within two spaces. Well, that was these two, this one with its uh, defensive bonus. They couldn't take this one because there's a leader there. Um, I'm not sure how to read units, but I don't want to look it up. Uh, so I figured they could not take that. So they took uh, two more, but that gets rid of one of their kind of problem places. So now, as well as here, so that they have easier routes into the, uh, the major cities. And to finish up the activations, the Christians lower the uh, resistance factor down to a four there. We'll see if they can hold the siege throughout the turn. One interesting thing, an event card, uh, Baldwin III reaches majority, so now over here we have a fairly good King of Jerusalem in play. That's good ratings. That will help the Crusader cause, well, the Christian cause. And then it goes into the box. It's a mandatory, but it's, uh, they, the Muslims definitely did not want to play that. Okay, uh, now to the end of the turn cleanup, and I'll come back after that. Well, after demobilization, Damascus' the siege is abandoned. Um, very low chance of it succeeding. Only he needed a one to keep it up. But there just wasn't much for the Crusader player to do with his cards. So we're moving into turn four. And we'll be seeing the Crusade being called on because uh, the Muslim player has more than whatever, six victory points, eight victory points, I don't remember. I think it's six that he has to have. We saw the Christians pull most of their leaders off the board. Uh, the Jerusalem forces all had to come back because of the Siege of Damascus. I'm keeping forces on the board within the limits. A uh, few of the Seljuks coming off out of Edessa. They're going to have to redeploy, probably back here at Mosul. I may want to pull Zenji off too, just because I can put him back at Mosul and it's easier to shift my troops that way through Edessa, one way or the other, uh, probably this way because it's shorter even though there's a, an attrition check because of it, which is painful um, in order to continue. I should shift this so I can kind of see that green under it. All right, and up this one goes.